We have Air Tracker 7 up and moving towards Greeley, and uh, I'm, I'm also reading that uh, Highway 85 and 42nd Street currently underwater in Greeley. We're also hearing that Milliken is, is cut off as well as we are covering uh, uh, this part of northern Colorado. So there's a lot going on in Weld County. We have Steve Leems joining us on the phone from the Weld County Sheriff's Office to tell us more about Weld County. Thanks, Steve, for taking the time to talk with us. What are you, what are you hearing? Well... Uh, the short of it is, if there's a road that can be closed in uh, the Greeley, Evans, Milliken area, it probably is. Uh, we're experiencing a tremendous amount of water coming uh, off the South Platte and uh, basically overflowing the banks on either side of the river up to a half mile or more, uh, especially through the Evans and East Greeley area and out towards Kersey. Wow. And I know you had some evacuations. Tell us what the status is of that. Well, the city of Evans uh, evacuated the many parts of the east side of their town, basically a corridor between Highway 85 and the actual South Platte River. Uh, they ordered a bunch of people out of that area, and now we're uh, in the early stage of early stages of evacuating the eastern parts of Greeley near East 18th Street and Fern Avenue, as the South Platte River is starting to overtake its banks and converge with the pooter in that area. Certainly you're trying to be proactive in the situation. Let me ask you this about proactivity. Do you have a situation where when the feds come in, as they are going to in Larimer County and Boulder County, and that, will you be talking to this Type 2 management team too as well? Well, uh, we're currently standing up our emergency operations center, and all of those conversations will occur between uh, the sheriff and the county commissioners and any of the representatives from, the, uh, from FEMA or what other organizations may show right. up. I, I just wasn't sure how, how, how far ahead in advance of something like this where you know that there's going to be trouble uh, of some kind here. You can, uh, you're getting the first part of it. If you can act or if you have to wait till it happens. Well, you know, we're trying to be proactive. Our uh, commissioners, I believe, uh, declared a state of emergency for the county. Uh, you know, but we tend to uh, we tend to take care of ourselves pretty well in the area. So, uh, if, if we don't need the assistance of uh, FEMA or the federal uh, government, we'll probably. Uh, try not to utilize it, but obviously in an event like this, uh, we're going to need lots of resources. How that's going to play out in the next few days or weeks or even months, um, I'm not certain. Sure. Uh, we're going to have to wait until some floodwaters uh, kind of subside, and then we'll work from there. Yeah, absolutely. And, Steve, as we are talking with you, we're looking at pictures. I, I know it's in Weld County. I don't know specifically where. where the, sure. There's one horse yeah, just tied, to, uh, tied to a fence there, and it looks like that fence is going to go or at least go underwater here very quickly. This is west of Evans. So, yeah. um, uh, Steve, when you say that pretty much all roads around Milliken, Evans, Greeley are closed, do you mean they're impassable? Describe for sure. us. Well, any of the arteries that go north and south through the county that uh, have to cross the South Platte, uh, they're essentially closed. We don't have any roadways where you can get from the north of the Platte to the south or vice versa. That includes 85, I-25, and any of the county roads. Uh, basically, the river has found its own path through the county, and in some places it's, uh, it's flowing over the highway, and in other places it's just that the bridge is... Uh, basically underwater or there's water flowing across the top of the bridge and they've been deemed unsafe for travel. So, you know, if you're in the south part of the county, you're pretty much resigned to the south part of the county and vice versa for the north. So. This is something we've seen in a number of counties now as we're looking at what's taking place uh, up sure. in Larimer County where the river has just literally cut it north and south. Correct. Yeah, we're, uh, we're having a very difficult time moving resources between, you know, where we started with the most... Uh, with most of our problems down in the Tritown area, now up to Evans and LaSalle and those areas, um, you know, we can we can say we need the people, but getting them across the river to the areas where we need them most right now is is proving very difficult. Well, and I wonder about that as we we are looking at this video. You can see how people are literally trapped in their homes or businesses or in their farms. Are you doing water rescues? Yeah, right now. Um, Many of the fire departments are, are in the process of doing water rescues as needed. Obviously, we're going to those who, uh, who can't take care of themselves. As I've spoken with several of the stations, uh, many of the farmers out in this area are very resourceful. They have tractors that they can uh, you know, get through large amounts of water, and, and they've, they've taken advantage of those opportunities and evacuated themselves and their neighbors and gotten to high ground. Um, 
but in the areas where you know people haven't been able to evacuate or they were surprised by the floodwaters, we are making attempts to get to those individuals, but it's just a time-consuming process. This uh, situation where you're, you're watching all of this starting to unfold, I mean, you you folks still have your televisions and your power, so you're watching an awful lot of what's taking place in Boulder County and Larimer County, and uh, you're, you're, you've got to think to yourself, man, that's headed our way, and it's, uh, Mike Nelson was talking about it to two days ago, that this sure. eventually was going to come your way. What kinds of things uh, have you done to this point? What kinds of things are you prepared to do in terms of helping folks uh, who are going to be in the path of all this? Well... Right now, we're doing as much as we can to uh, use our emergency 911 system and, and warn people ahead of time to get them out of the area and, uh, you know, create pre-evacuation uh, plans for everyone. Um, as far as power and electricity goes, the areas that you're seeing that have been overtaken by the floodwaters, obviously, we don't know what the status is of those residences, but uh, we, we still have power and most of the areas that are, uh, you know, close to those flood stages. So uh, we can get information out to people. And so far, uh, we've had a very good response from the residents that live in those those affected areas. They're they're moving out on their own. Uh, we're not having to do any forced evacuation, so to speak. But, uh, you know, quite frankly, um, two days ago, nobody thought that the Platte River would be overflowing its banks like this. So. Mm-hmm. Well, you could warn people uh, the seriousness of this didn't really seem to hit home until it actually happened. Well, sure, and then uh, the, the rain stopped, and then we were able to, to really reassess. Right. As, as Air Tracker comes into Evans, Steve, I'm, I'm wondering about um, the status of Highway 85 or other major roadways in and around the, the Weld County area. Well, the only place where we're really struggling with Highway 85 is right where it crosses the South Platte, and uh, there's a large bridge there between Evans and LaSalle. Um, I don't look for that bridge to be open for quite some time. We're we're expecting the height of the floodwaters to be about 6 o'clock this evening, so uh, we don't know if we've seen the worst of it yet, but um, just from being out there probably three hours prior, um, I wouldn't want to have traffic going across there. So, you know, we're, we're going to be we're going to be struggling for, you know, some upcoming hours. Well, now, in, in computer language, they would call this a workaround. I guess you would talk about an alternate route. Are, are, do you have alternate routes? We, we have no alternate routes right now because uh, actually Highway 85 is probably the most robust bridge right. across, exactly. uh, across the South Platte. And with I-25 closing down earlier in the day, we're kind of, I mean, we're kind of stuck. Um, yeah. we're, we're being told that I-25 uh, may reopen at some point here in the future, the the near future, after some bridge inspections and whatnot right. are done, but we just don't know what that status is, and I, you know, I can't even predict the timeline there. Right, we know C. Don is working hard on that. Go yeah, ahead. and Steve, as we heard from um, some of the other sheriffs in, um, well, particularly in Boulder County, where they said that there are 80 people unaccounted for. Do you have any tallies like that going on? Is there anything we need to know about uh, people in in the Weld County community? Well, we're so early into the evacuation stages, we don't have any reports of missing persons uh, at this point. Uh, we are working through our various emergency operations centers, and obviously that'll be d- data that we collect and have to uh, research over the next hours and days. But uh, as of right now, I think uh, we've, we've kind of stayed ahead of the curve on that, uh, on that front, and we're hoping it stays that way. Other than people that have Storm Shield and the 7 News app, which we try to give information out to them, what kind of information can people get in Weld County uh, in terms of uh, the, the status of where things are right now? Well, the best place they can go right now is at a, to our uh, Weld County website, which is www.co.weld.co.us. Uh, we have a uh, a map feed that we're doing that uh, is continually updated with all the road closures yeah. in the county. And then also we have uh, Facebook and Twitter links. And we're pushing information out through those those two uh, media outlets so that you know people can get updates as needed. Uh, our dispatch center is obviously overwhelmed right now, so we're trying to have people avoid calling in right. for any kind of uh, information that way unless... You know, they, they have an actual emergency to yeah, report. No barking dog and, calls right now. Yeah. And well, what about services, Steve? I'm wondering about um, water and power and um, phone lines, that sort of thing. Sure. So far, the uh, the flood area has been very limited to the, you know, the, the river basin. So we're not really uh, 
in a situation where we're noticing a, a major impact on any of those services. Uh, but through our emergency operations center, we do have uh, we do have interworking with all of the different uh, providers to make sure that we keep things up and running as best we can. Okay, because Steve, I, I'm sorry, I'm looking at these pictures now from <laughs> yes. Air Tracker Seven. Right. And this is Greeley, west of 85, and it looks like mobile it homes. might be a mobile home park. Right. Actually, and yeah, what you're looking at is uh, it's kind of a mobile home salvage yard oh, okay. Uh, okay. that was close to the river there. Those are not actual oh, homes. Nobody's living there. in those. Thank you. Yeah, goodness. no one's living in those, but those are the, those are the homes or former homes uh, that are actually the most threatening to the Highway 85 bridge. Uh, oh. We're hoping they all stay anchored and they don't end right. up floating mm -hmm. downstream. If any of any of those hit the bridge, we're uh, we're going to be looking at something totally different. Wow! Yeah, and uh, let's see, is that Forty Second, perhaps? Yeah, you're at Forty Second Street and Highway 85 there. And I'll tell you, just uh, you know, two or three hours ago, that was all above water. We we were driving on that that piece of land wow. right there. So just to the uh, to the south of that intersection, Forty Second 85 is the River Bridge. That'll give you an idea of uh, you know kind of the the devastation we're looking at right Steve, now. Steve, I'm gathering you're watching this on TV with us right now. So, yeah, I so, have the ability to do that. Well, that, that's but, wonderful. I mean, so yeah. that, that helps us a little bit because you can well, uh, tell us what we're looking at and which direction we're looking. Sure, and I, <laughs> I wish we had the, the same ability to put a, a helicopter up in the air right now, so you guys okay. are being very helpful to us, too. Well, we're glad to be able to do that and, and, and glad that you're able to, to walk through this, sure. this area with us. But you're saying, I'm sorry, th this water level just came up within the last... Uh, you know, the last two to three hours, those trailers were threatened earlier, but uh, the intersection there at 42nd and 85, uh, we had we had personnel stationed there and were diverting traffic as cars were driving through there. So right. that's come up and just, I mean, I, I'm kind of shocked to see that because that's really come up in just the last two to three hours. Well, as we Crazy. saw the cars go through there, we see the water spraying. I mean, it's sure. just got to be at least yeah. uh, eight to ten or more inches deep there. Yeah. Do you have additional help there in Weld County? You know, we're pretty strapped for resources right now. We've called in uh, quite a few. Uh, well, we've we've called in the personnel that we have available to us, and we've gone on extended shifts. Uh, typically, you know, we would share resources with all the different hmm, uh, right. municipalities around us, but everybody's struggling with the same thing. So right now, it's more of a coordination issue. Even if someone offered to bring troops to us or bring personnel to us. Uh, we can't get them across the river to get to some of the areas anyway. Well, so. they, do, they do have helicopters that can bring those in, but at what point do you Correct. make the call to the governor or, or whomever and well, say we need help? That's a determination we'll be making through our emergency operations center. Uh, you know, this is pretty devastating looking, but right now what we're concerned with is human lives. Of and course. I think we've done a pretty good job of staying in front of that uh, with the manpower we have available to us. Uh, obviously, when cleanup time comes, uh, that personnel request will be much different, and I would suspect that's where we're going to need more help than anything. Yeah, and you see that Weld County is on that list of the 14 Colorado counties included in that uh, disaster declaration from the governor. Right. Um, but uh, again, that uh, order authorizes $6 million for the disaster emergency fund, and just, uh, boy, looking at, at, at what we're seeing just in the uh, Weld County area, that's a right. drop in the bucket, wouldn't you say? Well, that's uh, that's probably a pretty good estimate of that being a drop in the bucket, <laughs> yeah, so to yeah, speak. Yeah. Good analogy. So, so at this point in time, uh, what happens over the next, let's say, what what are the next critical hours for you? Is it between now and midnight? Between now and tomorrow morning? Well, you know, six o'clock is going to be a, a a pretty important hour for us to look at. Is we're, we've been told that's going to be the peak flow. So at least we'll have an idea of how far the the waters are going to reach, or uh, what we hope to have a good idea. Uh, we've been told that uh, there could be more rain coming this evening. So basically, from six o'clock this evening until the next uh, until six o'clock in the morning, uh, that's going to be a really tough time for us. Things get a little uh, harder to deal with when the sun goes down. Uh, you know, we have to start worrying about any kind of criminal activity as well associated with any of these areas. So, uh, you know, we're going to have our hands full, but uh, we're planning. And, and moving personnel around as we need to, and evacuation shelters are being set up for those that can't find another place to retreat to. And, and tell us, is there something that we can share with our viewers, anything you want to say to people uh, out there right now as, as you're anticipating the height of this at, at 6 p.m.? 
Well, I've said this every time we, we're, we've we been on any of the stations, and that's basically if you don't have to drive and you don't have to be out and about, please don't. We have a massive amount of people that are out, you know, wanting to see what's going on in their community, and I understand that, but the best way of viewing it right now is through the different television outlets or listening on the radio. Um, people who want to get a firsthand experience are very easily or very likely to become uh, victims to the to the floodwaters, and um, all that does is is continue the problem more and more. So if they don't have to drive, we don't want them to be out and about. Yeah. One quick question before we let you go here, and uh, we want to find out about what's going on with the weather. Uh, to your knowledge, has uh, Well County gone through anything quite like this before? Well, not to my knowledge. Um, you know, I know we've had some pretty severe flooding, um, you know, over the past few years or decades, but uh, I. I, quite frankly, I haven't talked to anyone today that's seen anything quite like this. And uh, I've been I've been in Weld County for the last uh, 18 years, and nothing close to this. So. And Steve, uh, before we let you go, where can people go? Where are the shelters set up? Uh, you know, a list of those things are provided through our Facebook and Twitter feeds. I don't have all that data right at my fingertips, but uh, through our Weld County website, most people can find that. I know down in the Fort Lupton area, it was at the rec centers, and those are kind of the areas that are being utilized. But I, I don't want to give improper information. Um, but it is, it is available through our website. Well, and is that plan changing based on what you're seeing now from Air Tracker Seven? Yeah. Well, a lot of it's changing based on you know the numbers that continue to to pile up with new areas, um, and it also just depends on which direction people flee. So we're we're kind of in the in the middle of making those plans to some extent. Yeah, and as we're watching this now, where where are we? What what's Air Tracker um, focusing in on? Can you tell what area? Is the, it looks like it possibly looks a like, rescue going on there. Yeah, it looks like we're in in the uh, Evans area, the East Evans area, along what what would be known as Riverview Park. Uh, I'm not sure exactly. Oh, might be search and rescue underway. Yeah. yeah, that that looks like a privately owned boat mm -hmm. with a couple of uh, fire personnel in there, and I'm sure that's what they're doing is looking for anyone that's uh, kind of been left behind, but I don't know the specific area they're searching right now. I know it's near Evans or, the, you know, that, that general vicinity. And if we back out, I can probably get a better idea, but I, I just don't know for certain. All right, Steve Reams uh, with Weld County. Thank you so much for taking the time and doing this tour with us. We certainly appreciate it.